Guys, hello and welcome to FPL Juice, giving you the latest squeeze of all the juicy bits from our favourite game, the Fantasy Premier League. My co-host is called Ash. And my co-host is called Nick. And coming up on today's show, we'll be shining a light on our team's Game Week 2 performances. Uh, getting another differential pick from our man in the know, the agent. Uh, checking out who's top of the FPL Juice League uh, after two game weeks. Uh, awarding another Team of the Week, as well as a very new feature, our Wally of the Week. Stay tuned for that. And we'll be having a quick preview of our Game Week 3 fixtures. Plus, anything else that we can squeeze in as per the norm. But before all that, we would like to uh, welcome, and we're super excited to welcome, our very special guest, Mr. Richard Lee, uh, former Watford, Brentford, England under-21s uh, goalkeeper. Richard, welcome to the show. Great How are you? Here. Welcome, yeah, very mate. well. It's very good. good. Really good. good, really, We're really good. To have a guest. Super it's excited nice. to have you. It's nice to have some intelligent company uh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a nice change. Smooth. Yeah, no, how, are, how are you? Yeah, pleased really to be good. here. Yeah, delighted. Yeah, no, it's obviously great to have the the, uh, the season underway again. Although yeah. it feels like such a short break that we yeah. had, but no, great to be underway again. Who was holding the gun against your head when you got the invitation to join us here? Uh, I cannot name them. I cannot <laughs> name them. But was, I'm it, here. was it the agent? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> the secret agent. <laughs> Um, yeah, great to have you on. So yeah, we're going to just be talking about going through our normal show. We're going to be uh, going through our normal pod, game week reviews and stuff like that. So we'd like to get you involved at every opportunity we can uh, before we get into the real juicy stuff about uh, about you. So first up, let's go with it. Let's see those teams from right. game week two. Game week two review. And first up, we've got Nick. Nick with his game week two performance. So what a team. What team? <clears throat> 61 points. Yeah, talk so to me. So, slightly, I think the average for the week was 59. Yeah. So, slightly better than average. I'll take it at this stage. <laughs> Anything that's just not going down <laughs> is, is a result. Are you not really minute. disappointed after you wildcarded and only got? I mean, I did take out Son, which some might say could have been an error. <laughs> maybe. After his, maybe a slight <laughs> error. Did you see, did you see that performance? four goal uh, yes. What a performance from Son, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you took him out? I took him out. There was a method to the man. To be fair, last week, my strikers were um, Callum Wilson and Mitrovic. Okay. I mean, Mitrovic, again, I took him out. So again, it, the, the trend is definitely a negative one at this stage. But I brought in Jimenez. I brought in De Bruyne. Um, mm. And Sace was more of a long term like season season view of it um okay. i was i Gave tried to bad, sprint bad penalty though right he... yeah yeah what I did was he thinking mm, that I know. was so rash i'm quite it? glad that they don't deduct points for actually they should causing a penalty they should they should he, he did he was sort of single i don't know why he would why he would do that in that position he, he, he seems like quite a, a solid defender yeah He's a bit out of character but um the good point was I had De Bruyne, so I kind of what I what I lost I also gained, so that was that so you, was all right. You got De Bruyne, you got Calvert Lewin, yeah. By the way, looks like he is on it this season. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's it's actually nice to see him getting a bit of a chance. Mm. I think because you got like um, Tammy at Chelsea, who, who did also did well last season, I thought, and then it didn't mean anything. They still went into the transfer market, whereas Everton have kind of gone really hard in the transfer market in other positions which they felt like they needed to strengthen mm. but kept faith with, um, with with Dominic so I'm glad to see he's doing well and certainly as an option in, in Fantasy League I think he's gone up again in price now hasn't he actually is he yeah. 7.2 so he's, yeah, he's, he's had up. two he's price on, rises he's on, already he's on the increase so, now um, you had a, you had an okay week from if you're wild carding but if you don't know wild card is when you get the chance to literally change your whole team mm. and I told Nick not to do it too soon because you only get two a season right okay. Nick's popped it early. Well, after one, after, after one, one game week, week wow. he's gone and just revamped the entire team, and he's, he's performed it's, worse. It's like a Mourinho, <laughs> a Mourinho triple substitution at yeah. half time. Just got emotional, got just, emotional, just changed the whole team. Yeah. Yeah. It could right. have been different if you'd captain DCL, yeah. but I mean, you got some plus points there, Trent and Robbo, who I've got as well. I had them I st- clean they're, sheets they're and a bonus point much, for Trent. I mean, the the three Liverpool players and the keeper are the. Only oh, I'm Will, Callum Wilson. They're the they're the players I didn't change. Mm. Do we need to talk about that's my speciality, by the way, goalkeeping. Do we need to talk about? We do, we do. Yeah. I need some help with this. Mm. Um, I had some options at the start of the season. I was thinking, do I go? I mean, you'll see from Ash's team in a minute who he went for at a similar price. But I thought, out of the keepers, how Southampton kind of finished last season, I thought the one that's gonna get the most points has got to be McCarthy rather than. 
the other options of um, you know the the uh, Brighton keepers and I thought oh, let's just go with him let's go let's go safe they look solid but they look like they look like I don't really think any fault of him but I think mm. they don't look like they're going to keep a clean sheet anytime soon yeah <laughs> I thought the first game might have just been jitters but that performance at the weekend was 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 not pretty to watch no what, we're did, gonna, what we're gonna, did you make of it well yeah no I know we're gonna have the prices up soon aren't we and I've already had a good look through the goalkeepers <laughs> and a couple of recommendations to give it's, and like you say it's always not necessarily down to the goalkeeper with this because ultimately you know if you're an Allison and you're playing with that back line at Liverpool then of yeah. course you're going to pick up a lot of clean sheets I think for McCarthy uh, it's with me at Brentford actually Alex McCarthy top keeper oh, yeah. um, but I just yeah I worry for him this season uh, it's the, the reputation that, that pleases damage. me that pleases me it's to good hear for it. you <laughs> well great. it's not good for you because Rich is going to help me I'm going to have a decent yeah. keeper I'm intrigued to know who you've gone for uh, what we're going to do first we're going to look at what Nick's done okay. for for next week yeah so so you get one tra- basically you get one transfer a week free mm. but you can have more transfers if you if you want to take you can uh, roll it over and, okay. uh, and take a hit so yeah, not so good, Nick. But let's see what let's see what you're doing let's for next for game, week, the, for game week three. Let's have a look. So, right, talk me through this because Greenwood's come out for yeah. James Rodriguez. Yeah, the player that I you, said the player that was, I've been talking about for for two weeks, <laughs> two weeks consistently. Oh, you finally listened to me. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll, I will admit <laughs> that I made a snap judgment call before the before the start of the season. I didn't think he would do as well as he has. Um, I just, assume, you know, sometimes when you get these, he's been around a, a lot, hasn't he? And he's obviously gone to a few different clubs and it's not quite clicked. I just thought he might be one of those that comes to Premier League and it's almost a bit like Havertz yeah. wouldn't, you know, would struggle to adapt straight away. But in fairness, oh, he's, he's, been, he's been unbelievable. He's been superb. For yeah. Time, yeah. So I've got to, and with Greenwood as well, it wasn't just, because he didn't start. I did say this. He didn't start. I did ask the question. And he came off for 45 minutes, but I wasn't making a snap judgment on him. The, the problem with Greenwood, I felt, was more that Man United just looked so mm. off it. And, and, and Solskjaer was talking about a lack of pre-season on all this, but Man City played the other night with the mm. same mm. problems and it didn't seem to affect them an awful lot. They, they played outstanding against probably the best most organised defence in the league, I would I would have thought. So, what's your thoughts on Hammers? Yeah, I mean the bits I've seen, I've, I I saw, uh, I watched most of the last game he played, and yeah, he looked he looked very good. Looks on it, didn't very he? very good. Yeah, Sharp. that's something to prove as well. It yeah, was, it was mm. interesting. The thing with Greenwood though, what I would say is he's obviously did well against Luton, didn't he, in the cup? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, three nil night. Yeah, he's, um, yeah. terrible result. Uh, of Luton. course, of course. Great yeah. result. Oh, you Luton fan? Yeah. I didn't know this. You see, the whole Watford Luton thing. Yeah, yeah. I was, was going to skip over that. Yeah, yeah. For this one <laughs> show. Absolutely. Uh, but no, I think I can see Greenwood getting more and more game time, though. I can see that. Like, oh, 100%. It's, yeah. So I just wonder whether you've made that move a little bit too soon. I'm not too Nick's sure. Nick's known I, for his premature movements. Right. I wonder what you're going to say there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I literally thought Rodriguez. If what happens in FPL as well, if a player starts and people start transferring them in, they go up in price. Mm. So you, your budget can very quickly, you know, you yeah. might not be able to, if you don't make the move quick, you might not get that player in or be in a position to get that player in. Okay. But with Hammers, I just thought, he's just so on form. Mm. If I need to, if he, if he, you know, needs to be moved out to replace with someone else a bit later on, I, I can do that. But I want to get that form player in nice and early. So yeah. is that the only change you've made then? It is at the minute. Yeah. There's nothing to say okay. that I won't get excited on Friday night <laughs> and <laughs> change another 10 players. But yeah. um, no, I think I'm going to have a little bit of patience this week. And um, yeah, to I'm going that. with that. I, I may well go with De Bruyne as captain <laughs> after after watching uh, the Man City game on Monday night. I think that that could be my, my only change to what's on screen. He right? looks on it, doesn't he? KDB, mm, he's just yeah. no What's let up. Player. He's just unbelievable. Mm. Just unbelievable. Um, so, what, you think in Salah to De Bruyne captaincy, just so you know, the captain's armband, they get double points. Uh, yeah. So it's it. all it's a key decision. Right. Every I game think, week, it's something everyone always talks about. Yeah. Arteta's yeah. tightened up Arsenal. So I think De Bruyne has got more of a chance against Leicester than Salah has against Arsenal. But I always get it wrong every week, so it's not real. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean to ask you as well because last week you said you gave it this big build up 
yeah. about the, you were waiting for this, weren't you? Go on. The Jimenez thing. Mm-hmm. So last week, Nick had this master plan that he was going to bring in Jimenez, keep him so that he holds his value. Mm. And at the very last minute, he was going to switch him out for Lacazette. Okay. So I was looking at his team thinking, <laughs> where's Lacazette? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm watching the Arsenal game and well, Lacazette sticks away a great goal. It shows you. And I'm right. like, no. And I look at his team and he's like, he's, he's still got him in there. So what happened? So what happened? I'd say two things. Go on. One, <laughs> my thought was I need to save a transfer for this <laughs> week because clearly this team needs some work. But also, it shows what a genius player I am that out of him and his, and Lacazette, both of them scored. So whatever did, I did yeah. would have been yeah. the right choice. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, it, it was okay. The, my only thing, well, I wanted him and Ez the whole season, but I just thought Man City, it's a tough game. And then the last minute I thought, do you know what? Wolves are that team, aren't they? They're, they can surprise the big uh, the big boys. So I thought, do you know what? I'll leave him in. And he repaid my faith. Like, yeah. Good good man management. Should we see what a real <laughs> team looks like? Well, yeah. who, who's is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is my game week two team. Mm. Uh, as you can see highlights there are Son and I'm absolutely gutted about this can we start with the bad points before we no 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 because John St- right, had... Richard John St- so you've seen two teams <laughs> neither of yeah. which have a goalkeeper that scored any points at all this week yeah eight goals in two look by the way I like Sam Sam's a top keeper top top keeper yeah. but you know him yeah, yeah 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 of course yeah but I think that West Brom are just I mean it's I'm really hopeful for West Brom for some personal reasons I hope they do well but yeah. I just it's just going to be so tough for them. Do you think, yeah? So tough. And their first three games are always going to be like nightmare games yeah. for a goalkeeper, I would say yeah. that. I mean, eight and two games. It's it's. And by the way, a fault for zero of them, mm. but like, zero points. Yeah, I know. I mean, the proof's in the pudding, really, isn't it? Mm. But there's there's two reasons you go for goalkeepers. One for clean sheets okay, and two for save points. All right. So I was hoping that West Brom will be facing a lot of shots and we make a lot of saves, right. but okay. he's not actually been making that many saves because no, everything no. that goes against him just ends up flying in the back of the net. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know what to do. I've also got Button as my reserve, ah, who I know you're friendly yeah, with as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so I've gone for the West Brom double up in goal. So if if Sam's feeling a little bit, you know, under the weather, I've got I've got David David to come in and Excellent. deputise. Yeah. Richard, what would you say? <clears throat> one of the interesting things I think is is that step up from Championship to Premier League. In in terms of, for a keeper, making that transition, what 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 is the difference? You know, what is it? Is it the quality of shots? Is it the pace of the game? I said probably what Ash just touched on there. It's the, yeah, it's just the quality of what you do. I mean, I, uh, I played a few games in the Premier League. When I made the step up, if anything, the games in the Premier League I played were the easiest games I played because you've got massive stadium, so you can't feel any of the conditions, the, the weather or what have you. The pitches yeah. are like carpet. No one puts balls in the box anymore, certainly at that level, to come and claim. Yeah. So all it is is shot stopping, effectively. And certainly the top keepers now play out, so you're not even kicking it long. Yeah. But I let in more goals in the Premier League than Championship League One because the quality is that good. Yeah, they put them right, right into oh. the corners, I guess. And that's what Sam, in fairness to Sam, he was very, very good last season. The two games I've seen all got none of the goals I'd say were his, his fault. fault, but you know it's just the the nature of the league. Do you that's think obviously with up. Button having joined in the summer, do you think was, do you think that was purely for competition, or do you yeah. think that he potentially could get a, a, could. a, a so go in a little bit? David goal, goalkeeping in the Premier League so for me, and naturally I'm, in, I'm fascinated by it, but it's so interesting with David Button for me. If he does get in, he's the type of keeper that's going to be on the verge of the England reckoning, as Sam will oh, be wow. this season as well, just for yeah. the fact that. David Button in particular, distributions, different class. And for what England look for, and you look at the amount of English keepers in the Premier League, there's not many. Yeah. So whether it's Sam or David Button, it wouldn't surprise me a good season. You're that close to... That spot's to get up for grabs at the minute with, with the national yeah. team. That's interesting. It? Where, where, where would you rank Sam then amongst the England goalkeepers? Oh, I mean, you've got... And if anything, <clears> I'd probably touch on Pickford at some point today. He's started mm. off really well. Yeah. Him. He looks that like... That save, uh, the Deli Alley shot in the first yeah. game week. Yeah. What a yeah. save. And I think he's got a real point to prove. Like, yeah. he finished <clears> last season. Uh, last season, the whole of last season for him wasn't a positive season. No. So I think... So at the moment, he is edging it uh, purely for the fact a little bit of loyalty but also the way he started the season yep. that Nick Pope a lot made of him I'd love to have seen Nick Pope 
move and I don't think that's going to happen now um, mm. just so it get, he gets tested in slightly different ways yeah. that he's there or thereabouts I think you've then got obviously Southampton lads are kind of there but I'd say like the next level down probably similar to a Sam to a David Button uh, Aaron Ram big season for Aaron Ramsdale massive season and I worry for him in that I think you're stepping into Henderson's shoes mm -hmm. and they loved Henderson yep. Henderson difficult season for him because he could end up being a number two now which yep. then takes him out of the reckoning completely yep. so it's what you said it's suddenly it all closes up again who else we've got English keepers in the Premier League there might be one or two um, more but not not many it's, yeah that's pretty much Tom, Tom Heaton's not Tom Heaton won't be involved now Fraser Martin Force is nowhere near is he um, yeah there's not many there's so not all of a sudden you've probably only got five starting English keepers yeah. so it's going to be one of those five at the moment yeah Pickford is he's he done well as well he did well in the, the games for England in the, 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 in the, the last uh, the two break, games yeah. yeah and then started the season well yeah it's, it's crazy it's to think that it, it almost one season of not terrible performance just, just not as high as his levels were he was World Cup hero wasn't it you, you know not, not too long ago and now all of a sudden there's yeah. People have come out of nowhere to to really put him under pressure. So yeah, yeah it'd be interesting to see. But maybe now with with the signings that Everton have made, he's got a bit more confidence and a bit more settled. Yeah. It's, it'll be interesting to see how that goes on as the season progresses. Yeah, definitely. I just think for him, it's it's more where last season he was kind of a bit of a laugh and a joke, making mistakes. Didn't look like he was quite at it. You can see he's got the bit between his teeth. Like he's yeah. celebrating the saves. He's pumped. He knows how much. It's, and they've got a decent team this season. That, yeah. that is a they've big strengthened part of it. in midfield oh. massively, yeah. which I think shores up the defensive line, doesn't it? They've, I mean, they've got some real ball-winning midfielders mm. now there yeah. now with Allen and Decore, yeah, who's yeah. a battler. Yeah, because yeah. they've got people that because last season it was you know Tom Davies and Sigurdsson, these more creative players, mm. yeah. no destroyers in there. So, so this season, it, that's, I think that's part of the Going reason why Everton looks so their good. They're Gravison and Carsley. Gravison. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, but uh, but yeah, Son. Oh, I, we're cap back on I captained your, him your, last week. Let me just whiz through this this God. amazing team that I've put together. Um, yeah, captained in last week. No captain this week. Gutted. Yeah. <laughs> Gutted. I'm glad, but, you, I'm glad you got it that way round. Right. <laughs> uh, four goals. An amazing performance. I got, um, I got points from everywhere. And this is what I was saying to you last, last week. I try and get points from everywhere. The defence has chipped in. Dunk, mm. clean sheet at, away at Newcastle. Take that seven points. Great. Trent and Robbo. Uh, captain's armband on Bamiang. At least he got double points. You, I know. you would expect more. I, I at thought West he was going to score against yeah. home to West Ham. Mm. Uh, Mitrovic, who we've obviously spoken about Penalties quite a lot. again. Mm -hmm. Great header as well for, for his yeah, second was, goal. Yeah, yeah. He'll score goals. He will score goals. I can imagine as a keeper, it'd be the one player you wouldn't want to yeah. contest for. Uh, <laughs> no, <he's laughs> he looks like pretty solid. The handful a aerially. As you know, I never obviously never played against him myself. Um, I think I just missed him because I was at Fulham very briefly. So yeah. I just missed him. But he, yeah. And, yeah for, and to be fair, he's done it now at that level. Obviously, Championship killed it. Um, and he's doing it at that level again. And yeah. like you say, he scores goals. He is a goal he scorer. Yeah, he does. Goal scorer. Proper goal scorer. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my team finished on 83 points. Pretty so good. good week. Really good week, actually. Could have been better. But the main thing is I'm back above Nick in uh, the head to head. For this week. League. Uh, for just, this that's where I belong, really, isn't it? <laughs> That's where I belong. Let's I see, feel more comfortable. Let's see now. next week's team. Let's see what uh, what, what, cha got, what, what changes I've made. Uh, so stuck with John Stunning goal. I am not going to lie to you, Richard. I am thinking about taking them out. Okay. Um, but I'll ask you about that a bit later we'll, on. We'll go through them. Yeah. I've made two subs. I've taken out uh, Alan Samaxinen. Yeah. Because he's done nothing really for the first two games. I thought yeah. he was going to explode, but. <sighs> I think he took a knock in the last game. Yeah. Didn't like seeing that yellow flag, so I've t I've taken him out for Helder Costa. Nice knee jerk. Yeah. Bit of a <laughs> knee jerk. <laughs> How many goals did he score last season? Six. Well, it's not about last season. It's about oh, this he's season. Had one it? good game, and you put him straight in. He's had two good games. <laughs> he's played ninety minutes both games. He's, he's a goal threat up front. Come on, him. Uh, and I've got Gabriel Jesus in there for Vardy. So I resisted the urge to bring in KDB. Good. For now. Good for me, yeah. For now. Yeah. But I can just see Jesus is scoring hatfuls of goals in, He's, that, in that team. I don't Aguero know. Out, Aguero's out for months. I know, but I don't know how you feel about it. He I know what you think. Yeah, he frustrates me as a player because I feel like he could be anyone. He could be... I think if Jimenez played for Man City in that position, he would be getting 30 goals a season. Jesus, just for a law of averages, because he's just <laughs> in that shirt, <laughs> in that team... He's going to get goals. He will get you points. But look at his Didn't goal you describe the him night. as a Jordan Ayew? Yeah. He's a, <laughs> he's a hyped up... Jordan Ayew. Jordan Ayew was Brazilian, 
Man City would have paid 80 million for it. But he is, yeah, like even the goal he scored, the other night was just fairly, you know, not, not lucky because you get in the right position. But Listen, it doesn't matter how he puts the ball in the net. The, as long as he puts the, the ball legs. in the back of the net, I don't care. Um, <laughs> there's no, <over>. there's no <laughs> points for, cl- for like quality of goal. So no, exactly. True. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that counts is goal scored. We'll give you that. Um, I can see why so that's why it. he's in there. And then, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens next week. And then I may bring in KDB for, for Aubameyang. We'll see. We'll see how it gets. All right. Mm-hmm. So, what, about um, the, what about the community team? That's what everyone's The community team is, is outperforming us both. Yeah, at the moment, which, at the which moment. is no support. Which basically says you lot know more than we do, which is standard <laughs> at the moment. But um, so yeah, the community team, uh, Rich, is a team that we've let let the followers pick. Okay. So we did a poll in pre-season, and then they came up with this team. First two game weeks, they've not made any subs, so this is still the same team that okay. started the season. Um, and you can see they've gone for for a Mac in goal again. Yeah. Popular pick. Yeah, popular pick. Uh, Son's done the damage here. Harvey Barnes. Mm. Yeah, he's just he's just exploded this season. Yeah, we're, we're touching him last nowhere. week, didn't we? My pick, my prediction was he was going to have a good season. Unbelievable. Glad I got one thing right. He's not in my team, but I got seemed to knew he was going to do well, but still didn't pick him. So yeah, tuck myself up, tuck myself up there. But um, seventy six points for the community team this week. Mm. Um, they're above us both in the mini league. Mm. So well done, guys. Keep going. Um, we have got some options for you this week for you to change the team up a little bit. So yeah. um, we're going to do a poll like we did last week. And again, just join in the fun. Um, follow us on uh, Twitter at FPL Juice. That's where the poll is. Um, four options. I'm going to go for mine first. Go My on. option is a double change. I'm going to go Doherty, because he's done nothing for two game weeks, to uh, Castagna of Leicester, the fullback, who's played really really well it's first good, couple of games yeah. there is a caveat to that they are playing Man City mm. this week but he looks good he does look good Okay. Um, and the other change is Suchek to Podence so a lot of, a lot of talk about Podence this week because mm. of obviously the, the sale of Jota to Liverpool Podence is going to get his he chance he looked good against and Man got, City did you catch any of that, see that one, no, played really really yeah. well my, my only thing with him is there's a few players you know, they've got um, Neto yeah, yeah. They talked today about them signing Douglas Costa from Juventus. Yeah, that, Literally yeah. just in the last couple of hours heard that. But we'll we'll see. But he could be a risk. But it's certainly he's he's a cheap player comparatively for the game. He mm. can do really, really well. Be yeah. interesting to watch. Yeah. Uh what's what's your, what's your I'm pick? going Werner out. Yeah. And my man Jimenez in. That's so just my, the one change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll go steady. <laughs> Unlike my own team, where <laughs> I, I make wholesale changes on a regular basis. This, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll apply a more patient approach to this. Uh, so yeah, we will go with that. And then the agent, he's chipped in this week. He's chipped in. He's going to give you he's, his he's, option. He stopped shopping for for a minute to uh, <laughs> yeah. speak to us. So his option is going to be Albamyang out, KDB in. So that'd be a, that'd be. I mean, that's. It's kind of a no-brainer for me. Popular sub. You're, bank, really, you're going to want it for the season. Banks the point four for future transfers as yeah. well. And then finally, the last pick we're going to come on to a little bit later, uh, and that'd be Richard's pick for a goalkeeper because clearly, as I touched on with my team, mm-hmm. uh, McCarthy might not be the best <laughs> four point five option at the moment. But so let's see. Uh, let's see what we'll we see. Think. What Richard comes up with, yeah, as a, as a sub. It. So, uh, yeah, so those are your options, guys. Uh, three at the moment, and then we'll have a fourth later. So, Doherty to Castagna, Suchek to Podence uh, as one. Number two, Werner to Jimenez. Number three, from the agent, Aubameyang to KDB. And then we'll get the fourth one from Richard a little bit later. Should we move on? Yeah, talking of Been the waiting agent. for this all week. Talking of the agent. I love it. Now, let's <laughs> just say he did have... The first week, he was... He was lambasted by you guys for his pick of Deli Alley in game week one. So that didn't obviously work out too well. But he has been on at us all week. Make sure you remind people that his pick last week was Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Now, um, you know who he is. Some say that he's behind some of the most successful transfers in Premier League history, including Bebe to United and Peter Odenwingi to anywhere. Some say that he's the only man to ever drown fish. Unfortunately, it was Mark Fish, the former Charlton defender. <laughs> all we know is he's called the agent. But look, I assume you all had Dominic Calvert-Lewin in your team. 
If you didn't, you got problems. But I can solve it for you this week. Right, so I was in the ball ring in Birmingham, doing a little bit of early Christmas shopping. And there were two lads in the old gold, and they said that Raul Jimenez is the best wall striker since Bully. Talking about Bully in the ball ring, got to be careful there. But anyway, not sure about that. But Jimenez is nothing without his little Portuguese mate Podence. Get him in. 5.5 million, two assists already this season. Should add a couple of goals too. Five and a half million. That is a snip for the little snip. So there we go. Podence. Podence. Called it. We just spoke about him. I think he could be a great shout. It remains to be seen what happens with the transfers. But yeah, let's find out. He's got as good a chance as anyone. I mean, he's built up a lot of credibility. Last, 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 you said last week he picked he was, DCL. From a standing start, to be yeah. fair, after that first week. Yeah, <laughs> he picked Ali first week, flanked. DCL last week, got the hat trick. So he's built up a bit of a bit of credibility. As people aren't people, people already messaged on Twitter saying uh, who they think the agent is, which is brilliant. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. They're trying to the, work him out. Close or not? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> the first one was, um, I don't even have any run-ins with uh, Eric Hall. <laughs> that was the first yeah. guess. <laughs> uh, but it's not Eric Hall. You can you can see he has got some hair in the, in a pixelated image. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, if you've got any guesses to who he is, um, yeah, let us know. Put it in the comments. Uh, send us it on Twitter. Be, uh, we, we can almost see who is the agent. Uh, one day we might be able to reveal it, but... Um, yeah, not but quite yeah, yet. yeah, yeah. So, so Podence is is the agent's pick this week. Mm. Let's see how he goes. That's be cool. Let's see how he goes. Right, let's move on, Richard. We'll come on to uh, to have a bit of a, a chat with you now about things away from FPL for for a couple of minutes. Yeah, sure. Um, there's all sorts of questions we've got about goalkeeping in general, and and it's very much almost a, a, a sport within a sport. I suppose it's kind of it it feels so different to 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 kind of the other positions on the pitch and it's a whole different role um one of the questions i've always kind of had in my head is, is obviously keepers will train all week with the team you've got a ball at your feet for you know however many hours a day we've seen a big rise in uh, in terms of goalkeepers and the, and the demand for them to be able to play with their feet over the last few years especially with allison and edison and, and, and these sort of people. and obviously i guess Neuer was kind of the first practitioner to kind of bring it to to the mainstream somewhat um but i just don't understand why can't more keep you see when a ball comes back from fast back there seems to be such panic just to be able to and i get you know it's it's the pressure as well but why do you think more keepers aren't able to kind of seemingly just play football <laughs> in, a, in a nicest possible yeah. way well no we saw it with kepa at the, <laughs> yeah. at the weekend and i think the bit I'd say is it looks, it does look so easy when you're watching on TV and you see that view and it's so simple. Why don't you just pass it to the city midfielder or why don't you just clip it to the, I promise you, when you're back there and you do have the ball at your feet <laughs> and you're trying to thread it through two strikers to that city <laughs> midfielder, for me, there's nothing scarier. Yeah. And there was like, it has changed so much even from when, I'm only five years retired, but even from when I played to where it is now. Like when I was younger, the back pass rule only came in when I was 12 years old, for instance. So oh, really? it was just something you didn't focus on. And even when it came in, it was more a case of if it comes anywhere near you, kick it as far Smash as you can. It. So until yeah. the age of 20, I didn't even consider. And when people used to do the side volley, you thought that was them showing off initially. Whereas yeah. now, if you don't have the side volley, you're not going to make it to the Premier League. So it's just the, the whole position's changed. And actually now where... Joe Hart, good example, when he was young, everyone said he was phenomenal with his feet mm. and now he's considered not good enough with his feet because of the likes of Edison Allison yeah. taking it to another level. So what we're going to see more of, because football's based on statistics as much as it is now, and goalkeepers, if you're not keeping possession of the football, you're not good enough for you know certainly the top teams, yeah. is that you're going to get far more footballers that turn into goalkeepers as opposed to goalkeepers learning how to play ah, I football. I think it's, it's probably just the, the highlight if it goes wrong as well, isn't it? How many times a game does a, a midfielder play a pass that gets cut out, but you kind of forget about it because it's nothing, it doesn't, might not lead to anything. But if it goes wrong, like you say, like it did with Kepa at the weekend, it, 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 can, it can almost finish your season. Yeah. You know, just, well, just exactly like that. Yeah, yeah, midfielder miscontrols it and it goes out of flame. Well, you just can't do that as a keeper. Yeah. If you have a bad touch, they're going to score. You play a bad pass out, they score. They and that's why 
there's like a generation of goalkeepers who would play not to make a mistake mm. as opposed to play to actually benefit the team. Um, I put myself in that category. Like I would, from goal kicks, I'd hit an area. In terms of crosses, I'd come for what I could come for, but the ones that were 50 50, I'd drop to my line. I at times over cover the near post because I knew what you'd get blamed for and you can kind of minimize blame. But then at times, yeah. I'm not necessarily the most impactful that I could be because I'm playing not to get blamed as opposed to playing to benefit the team and maybe yeah. keep possession a bit more. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's, it's flair with keepers is I guess not something that people look for is it it's like that's it you can't have like you talk about a striker it could be a 9 out of 10 one week and a 5 out of 10 but sometimes you'll go with that because you know they can produce a moment of magic well yeah. you can make one phenomenal save but if you're making three errors in the same game you're not going to get picked people would rather have like a Brad Friedling goal where you knew it was a 6, 7 out of 10 consistent every week consistent yep. like most managers want that yeah. as a goalkeeper but what you're finding now is at the top level even that's not good enough anymore because at the top level I mean you use Edison as an example like it's just a joke like yeah. I love watching him play it's just to hit those passes oh. he hits is so it's it's unbelievable he's yeah. like a sweeper almost oh, half the time the way yeah. he takes up positions it's like a quarterback in the, in the NFL it's ridiculous yeah. well the trajectory that he's he's doing it at and the way in which he's like side putting it into midfield but like 40, 50 yards you yeah know, he can pick a pass like, oh. most midf- like most quality midfielders can't he and by the way if he does it like he does it then yeah. instantly you're breaking lines you're yeah. in at the back and you see the transition the speed at which you get that ball into that player yeah. turn and you're at them and within seconds you're at their back line so yeah. that's the bit where and credit to Pep Guardiola because I think he's been a big part of the transition where mm. he's seen that you remember at the start when suddenly Joe Hart was being dropped everyone, everyone like, said it was harsh yeah yeah. and now you look back and by the way I think Joe Hart will resurrect himself this season at some point I've got a feeling but I think that yeah you can, you can see it now mm. you, know, you can see it so clearly that's one of the most he is one of the most important players in that Man City team yeah definitely so that sort of pass can take out six or seven players mm. out of the game straight away can't it yeah um, speaking of players that can't do that We've touched on it a couple of times. Uh, Kepa mm. from Chelsea. 75 million, was it, they paid for him? Yeah. So huge sum of money. Mm-hmm. Similar money to Allison, Even more than they paid, man, the Man City paid for, for Edison. Yeah. What's gone wrong with Kepa since he's come in? And what do you make of the new signing that's imminent, Mendy? Mendy's good. Mendy, Mendy I'll touch on because he... I do a bit of work sort of helping clubs recruit their goalkeepers. Oh, and Mendy was one I put forward to a club a couple of years ago. Oh, but really? Interestingly, Which club? For, I can't name the club. <laughs> uh, but they they for, missed out. That's yeah, for sure. They could have gone for a couple of million back then. And then oh, really? He, within a transfer window, his, his market value had risen too much for this particular club. So yeah. that was. But at the time, I did a lot of research on him because it was, for me, ticked all the boxes. Yeah. You know, but it was, it's funny, like, reputation can take you a long way. And I feel that there are. You know, certain people, you, you kind of pluck them out of the blue and maybe certain leagues aren't judged to be anywhere near the Premier League. And yeah. Also, the Premier League, it's a different style of football to La Liga, to uh, Ligue 1, to Serie A, etc. So, a lot of teams, they won't necessarily take that chance because there'll be the question of, like when De Gea came here, can they instantly adapt to the Premier League? Yeah. Kepa, you could argue there's a, a similar, uh, similar issue in that, yeah, he's got a lot of the attributes you'd want for a top, top keeper, but there's one or two at the moment that, He's, he's struggling with yeah. and I, I feel sorry for him for one because I've been there when all of a sudden things go against you and seemingly whereas a striker can go out the next week bang in three goals and everything's good in the world even if you keep a clean sheet the next week that doesn't make everything good in the world yeah. you probably need to have 10 good games 15 yeah. good games in a row it takes a little bit longer to build your yeah. confidence back up and David De Gea's got that at the moment by the way like he is one two mistakes away from being replaced and it's for him he needs to be so consistent yeah and sometimes you just make errors. Like it sounds ridiculous, but sometimes a ball might just move on you a bit, or there's a deflection and you're caught out. And it's not necessarily a bad error, but it might look really bad. Yeah. And that's you. You're out of the team. Well, yeah. I don't really know that much about about Mendy. Yeah. What can you tell us about uh, this goalkeeper? Yeah, he, physically fantastic. You know, very athletic, speed, good reactions, distributions, very, very good. I mean, look, he's for me. One Is of he most, good with his feet? Yeah. Yeah. One of the most complete keepers. Yeah, he'll he'll come and also this is a it's it's a small point but it's an important point mm. because he's coming in with Kepa having had a bad time he'll instantly be on the front foot. One of the reasons yeah. I think that I, I feel a bit worried for Aaron Ramsdale is that when you're replacing a Henderson, it's like how many keepers does it take to replace Peter Schmeichel? Yeah, it's that kind of you know you've got to be exceptional and even then they'll still compare you to the last guy. So I think for Mendy coming in, he is very very good. 
And I think the fact that Kepa's had a tough time, mm. I think that people will fall in love with him very yeah. quickly. Do you think that's yeah. a, maybe a bit of <clears throat> from Czech to Courtois? Do you think that was a bit much for Kepa yeah. as a young keeper, maybe? I think exactly that. I think massive price tag, and you're coming in for a couple of great keepers. Courtois, I know that the reputation, like people didn't massively warm to him. But he was excellent. Yeah, and so they I liked him they, when he was there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his reputation suddenly Soonest. suddenly <laughs> was terrible. As soon as he wanted to go, yeah. he's not a great player anymore. But I think, it's I funny think, like that. So I think it's that. I think that again, you kind of hear things. The thing is, so much that can affect a goalkeeper. Because the first season, in fairness to Kepa, he was he was all right. He mm. wasn't bad at all. It wasn't wasn't fantastic, but he wasn't bad. Didn't make many errors. But then all of a sudden, what happens is reputation suddenly shifts a bit. And then you see a couple of goals, you think, oh, could he? Maybe, maybe not. Then suddenly people will focus, hyper focus on that. And then you're looking for reasons to. Did you, to do you think some of that might be because of what happened in the cup final, where Sorry yeah. tried to take him off? And do you know, I, I know this will go against the majority, but I actually I backed him. Did you? Massively. Because I thought, if that was me, absolutely no chance I'm coming off. No chance. So you'd have done exactly the same. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And I know everyone disagrees with me on this, and I don't care. I'm sticking to it. I like it. And if anything, that's... <laughs> Goalkeeper's probably, union. No, it's, it's, not even, it's not even full that. full force no, right it's now. It's not even that, because Willy Caviero wound me up where he's on the side, looked like a puppy with his eyes kind of like there, like oh. tearing up. <laughs> uh, I was like, come on. He so wanted like, to be the hero. <laughs> yeah, oh, massively. Yeah. And so, I've, and no, if anything, and I think that did him no favours. It yeah. didn't help him, and I felt sorry for him. And I think then, yeah, and then obviously people started to move against them at that point then you start looking for things it's the whole you find what you look for yeah you know and all Absolutely. of a sudden then, this, then the media agenda out. yeah the it? stats come out the percentages and da, 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 and you okay do you know what that might be true but at the same time i'd look at it more objectively out of those goals which ones should he have saved yeah and then naturally when your confidence is low everyone's on your back he hasn't had this experience before to then have to do it at this level mm. have you got the ability to bounce back mentally well at the moment he's found it tough Maybe he would if he's given a bit longer, but I, it's in the question, do you stay where you are and try and win everybody over, yeah. or would it make more sense to start afresh somewhere? He is a top keeper, and I'm sure that he goes somewhere and it'll be a success. Well, like, a bit like um, we were talking about um, earlier, you mentioned Brad Friedel. Mm. Obviously, at Liverpool, was a, was a young player, didn't kind of get his chance. I'm, I'm a Blackburn fan, uh, uh, alongside Watford and my hometown club, but Blackburn were kind of my team growing up, and... Brad Fiedel to me was was one of the best keepers I've ever seen, and yeah. and to see him go from what he was at Liverpool, not really to, to then they would have loved to have him. I'm sure yeah. when he was in his prime, Liverpool would have loved to have had him, but maybe it just wasn't his time at you know when he was when he was there. Tim Howard at Man United, you know, it yeah, didn't quite work absolutely, out. Absolutely, Ben yeah. Foster at Man United, and yeah. this is it. A lot that will go to the top clubs. The scrutiny is different level, mm. you know, and this will Dean Henderson will have it at some point when yeah. it's, at the moment it's just been this huge. Uh, rise to fame and everyone's saying he should be England keeper and this that the other as soon as he's the Man United keeper and you've got Gary Neville on your case and all the other pundits and everybody listens to the pundits mm -hmm. who have never played in goal by the way but that's yeah. another subject you, you had a little bit of uh, running with Gary Neville did you? I I on Twitter this. yeah no, 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 it, just, I just, it just winds me up it's just the fact that it's like <laughs> it's like me reporting on badminton I don't play badminton I, yeah. I, you know, but you've got these outfield ex-outfield players that are giving such poor analysis yeah. such poor analysis what was week the one, in week um, out Roy Keane. When, oh, Roy, oh. when Roy Keane said about uh, De Gea making the, that save from Son's header. Yeah. You yeah, seen it when yeah. he said, oh, I could have saved that. I was like, yeah. what are you talking about? No, no, I, I, it's yeah, unbelievable. I'll lose, I'll lose but I, I guess I get paid to. Yeah, and that's it. They, I, I it's think entertaining. With, isn't there's it? not that Keane, many goalkeeping pundits, though, is there? That's the point. No. There's Why not that, that many. We've got Matt Murray. Matt Murray's yeah, on there. Matt's good. Yeah. And you've got, you've got one or two. But the problem is, even with Matt Murray, they'll talk to him more about the outfield stuff. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolves, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, whereas I think in other countries, you've got like, from what I understand, you've mm. got pundits that, like Brad Friedel does a bit with the American, you know, punditry. And yeah, in okay. America, goalkeeping is sought after position. In Spain, goalkeeping is sought after position. Yeah. In England, I still feel like it's the last kid that gets selected, goes in goal. And I think yeah. that... That will change when we have like a, a real, I don't know who the poster boy will be, but if you know, mm. if it is a Pickford or someone that all the kids want to be, and if they get a goalkeeping pundit, because yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do struggle with that because I just think it's, that it's could it's be you, Richard. It, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's funny how they they you, you kind of get that with the pundits, especially because goalkeepers do have this reputation of being big, big, colourful characters. You think they'd be more kind of involved yeah. in that medium, but yeah, we'll have to. We'll keep an eye out for who it's going to be. Just touching on Brad Friedel, you're, and you're spot on. So I had a season up at Blackburn, and so I got yeah. to work with him every day. And just for me, talk about, you know, I work with, like, I know we were touching on this later, but like Ben Foster, mm. uh, Brad, but like 
what is it you want from a keeper? And it's, it's, it is consistency. And mm-hmm. I think that obviously the level of goalkeeping has improved, certainly when it comes to distribution and uh, yeah, the way in which they're able to manipulate the football now. But I think it will still come down to the personality of a goalkeeper. You want someone who's so calm, confident, who isn't a 9 out of 10 one week, 5 out of 10 the next day. And actually for Brad, for me, I learned so much where he was just, even as a human being, just consistent. Mm. Every day he seemed like he was in a good mood. Did his mm. yoga for 45 minutes every day. Perfect. As soon as, you know, but he was just so, so zen. That was, that leads on to one of the, one of the questions I was going to ask you about, about um, that kind of psychology mm. and, and how important that is. And I know, you, I think you do a bit of obviously work with this now and the, and the mentality and the, and the psychology of being a goalkeeper. Do you, do you think it's a lot more important traits to have that mental toughness mm. as in it to have it as a goalkeeper yeah. as opposed to any other position on the pitch I, yeah i mean this gives me a chance to plug my book here because i actually yeah, wrote go a book for it. plug it yeah <laughs> plug away I, I uh yeah amazon uh graduation no i wrote a book on this because it was <laughs> for me i kind of like went from being a i suppose a kid who would i said i played not to make a mistake i wasn't playing to make great saves or mm-hmm. to be the hero i was playing not to make a mistake and a lot of goalkeepers, it's funny, I wrote this book and a lot of people then, like top Premier League goalkeepers, all came back and said, oh, I was the same, exactly the same. And I think the moment you shift it, and this is where I learned a lot from Ben Foster, although he's the same age as me, mm-hmm. where, he, and you can see it, how he plays. Like he is, he's happy-go-lucky, but in the sense that he works hard in training, but he doesn't, he doesn't allow anything to stay with him. He knows it is still just a game. And I think yes. it's very easy as a goalkeeper to get consumed by it. You wake up in the morning of a game, you're nervous, you know that you've got... 50,000 people about to watch you plus the millions slash billions on TV that are going to be watching you. You see all the comments on Twitter, on Instagram and you you, you believe it to be more important than it is. Social Whereas media think, must have yeah, really changed that in the last few years. You, you see yeah. everything. Yeah. Whereas I think the stuff that, people say about Ash on YouTube, oh, I don't know how he gets horrendous. himself out, it's, you know, it's, out uh, of bed in the morning. It's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but, it's easier to take when you're top of the league. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. But it is, it's kind of, and I think then I learned a lot from Ben where just he would, he just, he's still like a kid. He would just love playing football. You he can tell so that excited. in his performances. Yeah. He goes out and he doesn't, he doesn't take it home with him. No. You know, literally mm. as soon as the game's done, and the, the story I tell it way too often, but I was on the bench, the game he conceded from Paul Robinson. Oh, the, the full length of the pit. Yeah. yeah. Paul Robinson yeah. takes a, a free kick from the edge of the box, bounces over Ben's head, yeah. goes in. At the time, they're both vying for England number one spot as well. And I remember sat there in the change room afterwards, waiting for him to come in, thinking, I don't know what to say to him. Like, the moment the goal went in, my, you know, my heart sank. I felt dreadful yeah. for him. And it's one of those moments you want the crowd to swallow you up. Mm. So I'm sat there waiting for him. He comes in and he just bursts out laughing. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you're right. He goes, yeah, did you see what happened out there? I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, but he was fine. He was literally there straight on his phone. He went out and did an interview and then he's on the bus home having banter with everyone. Oh, and there's a fine him. line. Well, yeah, there's a fine line because certain people could look at that and be like, oh, he doesn't care. Yeah. He does care. He gives his best every game. But what he doesn't do is he was doesn't he take it to heart. He was, he was, yeah, he was on loan. Yeah, he was yeah. on loan. But I think he's not saying just, he cared any less. No, no, no. <laughs> but I think having the ability to, yeah, you, you take it seriously, you take pride in your performance, mm. but also not then going on a downward spiral when you make a mistake. Because the best goalkeepers, they make an error, and then the next week they're man of the match. Yeah. The, the goalkeepers that struggle mentally, and there's far too many out there that, that do, because you take it so seriously, you make one error that leads to two, three, four, five, leads to a bad running form, leads to being dropped. Mm. So that's where the mentality, and I ended up studying uh, neuro linguistic programming did a few courses in that because for me it was like right I need to figure out how I can a, a, approach football in a much more positive way and it certainly helped me a lot and that's yeah, a sign excellent. of really strong mental capacity and why he's probably still playing 100% now yeah um, it's probably a question you get asked a lot mm. but it wouldn't be FPL juice if we didn't ask you um, who, who are the best who's the best player that you've played with mm-hmm. and also the best player you've played against uh, against is an easy one that would be oh. Ronaldo um, yeah. What the what Cristiano? Yeah. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. From Man United. And what season was this? Uh, oh five or six, I think it was. Man United, and you were. Uh, yeah. Uh, Watford. Watford. So, well, when you it. say the just to pause, sorry. When you say the Ronaldo, I think there's an awful lot of disrespect <laughs> yeah. for the Brazilian Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah. Like he wasn't a bad player he was himself, up there. you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. not right him off. But no. Cristiano. <laughs> Cristiano. Yeah. He's, he's he edges it. Slightly, yeah. We played know. United. Yeah. Three times that season, once in the FA Cup semi final, yeah. twice in the league, yeah. and so it was two one, four one, four nil. Ooh. They, they, but they were, and they were. I think they won the league. Oh, at that, that time. season, yeah. yeah. I mean, Chris, uh, mm. Cristiano scored a penalty against me, and 
He scored twice in the three games. Yeah. And it's funny, yeah, the penalty, I don't know why, but I, in my mind, I always remember going the right way, getting fingertips and going the court. Yeah. I saw it the other day. I hadn't seen it for like literally 10 years or whatever. Yeah. Someone sent it to me and I, I dived the wrong way. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what's in your happened. head, you saved it. Yeah, in my head. In my head, I can remember being at Old Trafford. I can remember him stepping up. I can remember like the arena. He's gone down to my right. And I remember getting down, fingertips, and he going to the corner. I think I was so close to saving it. And I watched it the other day. I was nowhere near it. I went, I went to my left. So. Someone's photoshopped that. They, yeah, I think, so, I think yeah, I the way you remember, keep it as the way you remember. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. Is that the same front three as with Bruni and. And yeah, Tevez, Tevez or Bad Rooney, uh, Rooney lobbed me. It was Henrik Larson that game. He scored. Oh, past he was me as well. oh. Who scored? So we had yeah, Henrik Larson scored. We had uh, Kim Richardson scored in the the semi final. Oh, what's his name? Left back scored against Ever? me. Silver Vest. Oh, Mikhail Silvestro. Yeah, he scored past me. Uh, but Rooney ended up getting three. Giggs scored again. Yeah, 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 yeah. he scored. So some good, average yeah. players. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it like really when you're like picking the ball out of the net for like the third time? You're just like oh. God's sake, do you know, what's going on? Do you know what? The, the game at Old Trafford, so I was quite proud. The most I ever conceded in the game was fourth, and that was that game at Old Trafford. So, yeah, but it was it was more the second half where we were just camped in. And you know you have that kind of surreal moment where, so I was a Man United fan as a kid. Oh, was yeah. so I used to I could see where I used to sit. My mum yeah. and dad were there and all that. You have that surreal moment where it's like, wow, okay, this yeah. is, you know, they're just attack after attack after attack. Yeah. It almost didn't matter anymore. We were 3-0 yeah. down, <laughs> you know, 20 minutes to go. And I kind of, re- I remember I actually enjoyed that, those last 20 minutes more than any other game. Just really? It was just a bit like, all right, we're not going to win this one. Yeah. We, we Enjoy the moment. Yeah. yeah, and it was kind of taking in the fact that 77,000 people watching. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was, it was just really surreal, you know. Was he still was. like popping the old lollipops and... Oh, and going awesome. around people and stuff. Yeah, it was awesome. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So what about a um, player that you've played with? With, um, I guess it would be, so the Watford team, I mean, Ben Foster's obviously a good a, yeah. a good name, I guess. Not uh, he's, he's, But then I had the season at Blackburn, which was the Bellamy, Savage, obviously Mark Hughes era. I bet there was um, some Bellamy. characters. Was uh, yeah, yeah, Morgan Gareth Pedersen in that? Yeah. In that team? Yeah, Morgan. Yeah, he was yeah, my favourite player. My favourite. He, he was very good. Yeah. My favourite player. I was facing his shots, by the way. Like, that was... Rascals. Because he had that kind of, the Gareth Bale, no spin, yeah. moving oh, all over the place, going to break your fingers. Yeah. yeah. There's That's two guy there. Yeah, yeah. So he, two, so he was, yeah, he was great. Like, he was, the amount of times I'd be following him in... So we trained in Clitheroe, which is, for anyone that knows it, but you end up going about 10 miles on this single track lane. And the amount of times that I'd get caught behind him, and all you'd see is about 15 minutes on this road, and then you pull in, was... At least three times on that fifteen-minute journey, he'd be throwing a cigarette out of the, <laughs> out of the window. Like the guy was, but he was just amazing. He would <laughs> sit in midfield. Him, yeah. yeah, like he just wasn't the model pro nah. at all. Yeah. He'd just sit in midfield, and yeah, he was a brilliant player. Yeah, he was class. Yeah, he was unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah. So no, I guess there'd be yeah, that's a great there. team. Yeah, yeah. And they finished. I think they finished fifth or sixth that season. So long way from yeah. the, from the glory days that you remember. Yeah. Hey, Nick? Yeah. Well, at the moment, I've, yeah, got a bit of a way to get back to to those times, but. Luton are above you at the minute. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Let's not Luton. talk about it. Let's have some respect. Watford legends. We don't want to be talking about Luton. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and yeah, the only... Uh, the, the question I was going to say as well, with um, one thing we spoke about touching on with the psychology is, obviously we've just seen Martinez mm. make that transfer from Arsenal to Aston Villa. Um, in terms of how we did coming into the team, obviously did fantastically well. But with that empty stadium environment, I'm, for me, imagining what it must be like to be a top-class keeper, mm. being in the only position on the pitch where you cannot get away from the crowd and yeah. they're giving you a view, that for me must be the, like would be the worst part of it. Like, how much of a, an advantage, or, or even maybe a disadvantage? I don't know. Do you think it is not having? A crowd in the stadiums at the minute. It hundred percent it changes things. You know the fact it was what forty four goals this weekend, the most that we've seen. And I do think this plays a part because it almost feels like a training ground game. Mm. You know, for the lads I'm speaking to that are doing it at the moment, it's they're saying it's like a training ground game. It doesn't quite feel real. You don't get the instant reaction that you would get. You make a great save, you would expect that raw, or you make a mistake, you would expect yeah. you know a different sound. But you're not having that. So and Martinez fascinates me. Like he. Bear in mind, he's been there so long. And I saw him a lot, uh, well, certainly Reading and a bit of Wolves as well. But it's just, it's crazy for me how a player can be not particularly well known. Suddenly you play a few games for an Arsenal or for one of the top sides and suddenly you're going for 20 million, you yeah. know, a few weeks later. But credit to him, he's, this shows you as well, confidence. Like, the spell, obviously made the penalty save at the weekend mm. as well. Like, he is so confident and he is riding the crest of a wave. And he has got all the attributes. You look at him yeah. as a goalkeeper, he ticks 
a lot of the boxes. So I think Aston Villa and they they wrote. I think with Tom Heaton with his injury issues and what have you, like it's a they, shame, yeah. it is because I think that. But what they have now got Aston Villa and they've probably wanted this for a while and it never quite happened with uh, Nyland or yeah. Kalinic. Just their top keeper, but they obviously wanted uh, to have that kind of those three in place. Now, whether Jed still be happy as a three, I don't know. But you've then got now your three solid keepers. Good competition for places, good experience. Mm. I'm quite excited for Villa this season. Yeah, that no, should be interesting. Speaking of competition for places, mm. something we did touch on earlier. Um, I wanted to ask you about number one versus number two choice goalkeepers and mm. what the psychology is like for especially the number two. Mm. Obviously, you mentioned about Dean Henderson mm. earlier. What was it? What's it feel like as a number two trying to you know oust that number one when you know that he's solid and you're spending you know every week on the bench? Yeah. Do you want him to make a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> you do, don't no, you? Do you know what? <laughs> no, it depends. It depends. So I think that if you've got, so I had a situation. I went to Brentford. I went there expecting to be a number one, and then soon realised I wasn't number one. And that's yes, it's not good. So is that a conversation that you had prior to signing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, so they um, said, right, you're, Rich, you're going to be number one. Yeah, you're going to play 50 games this season yeah. and then you don't play the first game of the season. But this is it where then it's, it's, so it's different. If you're brought in and you know the script, yeah. then you're fine. Like, yeah, and I had yeah. it at Watford, in fairness, when you got Ben Foster playing, uh, I was a happy backup in sure. the Premier League, for instance. Yeah. Whereas I go to Brentford in League One, I went there to play and I'm not playing then you, you can ruin a, an environment by doing that as a manager. Yeah. There's been a few examples. This was one that wasn't anyone's fault, but last season, Stoke City end up having, uh, they bring in Adam Davis, they had um, Federici, and they already had Butler. Mm. They thought, as far as I'm aware, that Butler would be leaving. So you then have Federici, Adam Davis, perfect. Mm-hmm. The moment Butler doesn't go, suddenly you've got three keepers that want to play. It's so difficult to then yeah. keep everyone yeah. happy because yeah. you're all there kind of, well, what am I doing in my career? You know, so yeah. this is where I think the, the, the best... Goalkeeping environments are the ones where you've got competition, but the number one kind of knows they're the number one. The number two is pushing them, but is happy to be a two. Mm. Then you've got the older number three, who's normally the English Andy Lonergan, Scott Carson, Scott Carson yeah, Lee Grant, yeah. whatever, that sits there and is very is happy Richard being Wright? the number three. He's... Richard Wright, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, there's, uh, I think Stuart Taylor did it at a few clubs. Sure, you know. Oh, Man City he was, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing I said I was thinking of. Yeah, and that's yeah. the for me the Premier League. That's your perfect combination. I think I think you got to be careful. I'm worried about. I mean, I know Gary Neville's touched on this. The the fact you've now got Henderson and De Gea. Mm. I don't know how that's going to play out this season. It's either going to kick De Gea on and he'll be outstanding again or it might be one where if they're going back and forth I don't think that does anyone any well, favors. Judging by De Gea's last performance you, you wouldn't be surprised if Henderson came in for the next Premier League game in my opinion he played in the cup mm. against Luton I just think well. it's, it's a for a, a keeper like De Gea I don't know how your ego would take it being, being player of the season how many times three, three yeah. four, years four or five times or whatever he was as their player of the season to then kind of be Push to one side. Do, do you think he's going to be straight in knocking on that door, demanding a transfer? I don't. And, and possibly. I mean, you've. It's interesting because as a goalkeeper, the other way I look at it is you almost you build credit. And I think there was a point when David de Gea, his credit was so high. Well, actually, to the point where he's had a couple of tough years, but yet he is still playing. Mm. You know, because he had built so much credit over yeah. that period of time. But now, it's there's not a lot left. You know, and I think that he now needs that run of however many games. And look, Dean Henderson, you mentioned the game against Luton, he, he played well, made a really good, important save at 1-0, yeah. which in the end was... And that's what he's sort of building his reputation on. He's hugely confident in what he does, and yeah. he's, he's very talented. Yeah. No, a- anyone can beat Luton. <laughs> <laughs> let's, not, let's not go there. We're second in the league. Yeah. Premier League next season, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Shall we have a little look at the uh, Juice League? Uh, no, first of all, we're going to look at some goalies, I think. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. In our feature. So, yeah, let's get those uh, we're gonna look at some keeper goalies, prices up. Rich, and mm. we're going to ask you to have a little a little browse through mm-hmm. the uh, catalogue. Okay. See what you want to order. Okay. Uh, <laughs> see what you mind. think some value. Th- see what you think is a bit maybe you can't, overpriced. There's nothing yeah. to hand back. No refunds. So, uh, this is a list of all, all the keepers. Um, these are all the starting goalies, right? That we've got in the league here. Yeah, I've only picked the ones that have played a game so far. Yeah. Obviously, there's Leeds at a switch up, didn't they? So there's, there's, yeah, there's an extra uh, one in there. But yeah, yeah, had a had a look through the prices. Um, is there anyone in there that's that you think jumps out at you as obviously the keepers range from basically four point five up to 
uh, six you know, the, for the top ones. Is there anyone in there that jumps out as outstanding good value, first of all? Yeah, I mean, well, the fact that, obviously, I'm sure he touched this, Martin, is the fact that he made the move and he mm. will now, you would think, play consistently. I think Villa are going to be that bit stronger again this year. Mm -hmm. And already, obviously, he's, he's racked up a, a decent number of points. So, yeah, that would be a very good one. I mentioned Pickford. I think I've just got a feeling he's got a point to prove this season. This is a massive season for him. Last season wasn't his best. And already I can see that he's got the bit between his teeth. So I think at 5 million. I think Everton as well are going to be strong, which yeah. obviously plays a part. So I think he's a very good purchase. Uh, other ones to touch on. I mean, you've got obviously Ariola. I think that I can see him being... I just, the only thing with Fulham is I do think they will concede a decent number of goals. So obviously that's not going to do him any favours. But from what I know about him, he's Did he very, come from very PS, good. PSG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number two there. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's top. He's very, very good. Uh, I think then, I mean, Pope's always good. You think that Burnley defensively are pretty solid. Uh, Conceded four no, against Leicester in the last game, didn't no, they? No, true, true. They, but I think they've that, got a makeshift back line at the moment, though, yeah. with me and Tarkovsky out. Yeah, yeah. And I it think might be tough for Pope. Sean Dyche, I think, though. I don't know. Sean Dyche is year on, year out. Like, he's, yeah. Yeah. you know, he's They set up to not good. concede. Yeah. Uh, possible, don't they? I worry about Ramsdale, as I said, not, nothing to do with him. I just think that, well, partly the fact that he's coming in for Henderson. Also, I think Sheffield United, second season syndrome and yeah. all that. I think They've not that, started well, have they? No, I think they could have a tough a tough time. Uh, Joe Hart, in on the, I was going to say about Joe Hart, because I've got a feeling he'll come in at some point. Do we know what his value I is? I think he must be four and a half. Four five. Four. Yeah. He'd, he'd be an outsider for me, because I think that he will come in at some point. I've got a feeling. Good to see again. him back. In, yeah. a, in, a, in a renaissance kind I'd love of... to see Joe Hart back I thought he was a brilliant goalkeeper mm. for Man City yeah, he's got a point to prove Golden Glove winner mm. yeah, a few, uh, a few Lur times Lurice was yeah, out a couple times. of times last year wasn't he yeah, so yeah. he's obviously not kind of immune to a bit of uh, rotation so yeah maybe so an outside bet is Gazaniga well, right? still number three there now he's yeah. three there is he but there was a couple of rumours he, he, he seemed <laughs> decent he sort of did a job have you, have you, yeah. we've talked about it every week when we've been watching what, all the, or nothing. the All or Nothing <laughs> have you seen it yet? no I haven't yet oh no, definitely no. give it yeah, a watch heard, it's yeah. really interesting really good did you see so. the bit where he had them all three goalies lined up and yeah. they were doing the little the little briefing they yeah, said yeah, right yeah. so yeah we're going to go with, with Michel in this game <laughs> and you've just seen their faces man it was like oh Paolo's face he was like what what are you going with him what's going on is it like that though uh, Do you have like briefings with just the goalies and yeah, sometimes they break I mean, the news to you and stuff like that. I had it a couple of times. Ordinarily, most manager, golf, most people like it. Most goalkeepers like it to know the day before because you yeah. do prepare differently if you're yeah, one yeah. or a two. Um, I had it once in particular. I remember where it was literally fifty-fifty as to who was going to play. You yeah. know, and it was that kind of and like we're sat there. It's just a bit awkward because you sat there having like pre-match meal, sat next to the other goalie. Normally, yeah. you know, you don't know who's going to play, and then you get summoned in. It's like something off X Factor or something. <laughs> <laughs> you sit down, and it's like I choose you. you know? <laughs> yeah. So no, no, no one likes. Got some that, bad news for you, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Would well, you know the classic? You're going to have to get ready. You're through to the next. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It was the classic yeah. one, and we actually uh, we spoke to Rob Green about this. So he didn't know the, the game against USA. Like he didn't get told he was playing until two hours before kickoff, you oh, know, and that for me in a and, World Cup, in a World Cup, mental like that for me. And that was, I mean, everyone's got their pins on on Capello, but that for me is just dreadful it's, management. It's not like, that bad management. Why would no. you do that? The biggest game of his career ever, and to like put it on him that close to kickoff. It's like wow, you got to get yourself. Yeah, people say because oh, it was be a shock mentally. at the time, wasn't it? Every, no yeah, one yeah. expected him no. to start, so it was even more of a pressure. You know, at least if it it was a fifty fifty call. Yeah. But when you're probably not expecting it at all. And that's where, I know people always say, oh, you should always be ready. And what, but no, there is, I promise you, and this is coming from, so it just, it doesn't mean that you like you prepare badly if you're a number two, mm. but it's just a different feeling. You know, rather than going to bed the night before and being uncertain and sometimes not being able to sleep because you're uncertain. No one likes to be uncertain. So at least if you know if you're a two or a one, you can prepare like, yeah, knowing. So. For sure. Interesting, I never yeah. knew that. That's a... Mm. A little bit of insight. Another, uh, another nail in Capello's coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From an England perspective, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah we'll, move on, uh, we'll move on to the juice league, just before I do. Mm. Juice. Bits or no bits? Mm, bits. Oh, Gotta yes. be bits. Mm. Cool. All about the bits. Um, <laughs> all right, so yeah, the juice league is in full swing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our mini league. Okay. So um, we've got the top, uh, top 10 teams at the moment. Yeah. Uh, David Strong. Oof. David Strong. Strong by name. Uh, Strong by nature. Make yourself known. Give us your Twitter handle. DM us, please. Uh, also, while I'm on that, 
guys, if uh, if you like uh, anything that we've been talking about here, and you've got anything to say, please do comment, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, you know we love your feedback, so please do get involved. Um, great show so far, I think. Thanks. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, top 10, David Strong, uh, Ricky McEwen, he was our leader last week. He's yeah. down to third. Yeah. Work needed, Ricky. <laughs> um, so yeah, David Strong, 173 points. Um, the league code, we will get this right. We promise. We, we will get this right. One day. Uh, so last week it was uh, all in capital. So to be clear, the league code is M E. 88QQ and that is all lowercase all lowercase so uh, do make sure there you go professional job here here we go we're getting rid of all the digital stuff and we're going uh, analog on this one <laughs> so join in we'll be closing entries soon I think you had it upside down there actually. did I? no I'm joking Sorry. W <laughs> uh, but yeah guys do do join the league uh, I think we'll give it a couple of weeks um yeah, and we've got a, a special prize for the winner of the Juice League. We're going to put together a little bundle, but we thought it'd be nice if we got all of our special guests to sign the FPL Juice Football. It's in the middle of the table. So, uh, Richard, there's a gold pen ah, next fantastic. to the ball. If you, if you wouldn't mind just kindly giving that a uh, John Hancock on that for me. Absolutely. The first inductee to the Juice Hall of Fame. There we go. Yeah, so yeah, whenever we get a guest, we're going to get them to, to sign the ball and then, yeah, whoever wins the mini league in the season. That's will... actually a proper football a signature. Proper as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Show it on display. There we go. That was years of score wasted. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for that, mate. Beautiful really appreciate that. that. So yeah, we'll, we'll add uh, signatures as the season goes on. Um, yeah. Who knows, who knows how many we'll have by the end of the season. But yeah, it'll be a great prize for someone. So yeah, looking awesome forward guy. to that. Uh, team of the week this year, uh, this uh, game week is uh, Catherine Strong. Catherine, do make yourself known. Uh, is that any relation to the overall winner? I don't know. Maybe they are. Mate, that's some, reckon? There's some genes in that family. If that's, <laughs> if that's the case, teaming up. Team yeah. Up to take down the Juice League. Uh, 111 points. <laughs> uh, amazing performance. Obviously, you had Kane on the captain, uh, captain duty. Yeah, that'll help. Four assists yeah. and a goal. Brilliant performance uh, from Harry Kane. And Ketia. And Ketia in there. Out of nowhere. A bit of a strange one. But yeah, really good week. Well done, uh, well done, Catherine. Um, and a uh, new little feature. We're yes. doing the uh, the Wally of the week. Now, now, this could be for anything. This could be for like a bad week or a bad decision. It's just an awful call, really. Right? We thought it'd be fun to do it. So we're going to throw it in. Uh, <laughs> Wally of the week goes to Connor Goodger. Uh, team name Ginge FC. Now we should explain at this point, Richard. Mm. Once per season, you know, Ash was saying earlier how you get a captain mm. who gets double points each week. Yeah. So once per season, you're allowed to play a triple captain chip, okay. which triples the points of whoever's made captain. You get one of these. Uh, he has gone with, and understandably, <laughs> yeah. playing Crystal Palace, Man United, yeah. he's gone with Bruno Fernandes. Oh. And I, I mean, it is a, it is, Connor, I'm sorry, mate, it is a Wally of the Week, but <laughs> I feel for you because you're unlucky. He mm. could, in another day. Yeah, you're right. He could have scored a hat trick. He could, right. have, he could have got three penalties and they could and absolutely have absolutely yeah. torn it up, but so, it wasn't the case. He popped it early. Yeah. yeah. Didn't even wait for them to play a game. He just gone <laughs> in straight up. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry, Connor, mate. Triple captain, Bruno, game week two, awful call. Uh, you don't worry, your team your... still scored more than ours. But... <laughs> yeah. No, you've yeah, got 69 points. You've got more than you. <laughs> got more than me. But <laughs> in fairness, uh, it could have been all different on another yeah. day. But unlucky, mate. Uh, yeah, cool. So let's move on to our Game Week 3 preview. So here's a list of the fixtures for Game Week 3. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to whiz through these. And if you just give us um, like a score prediction. Yeah, let's have a little look. Let's see who to look to out for. Um Brighton Man United up first. What do you what do you, what do you think on that? Uh, I don't know. Brighton looked good against Newcastle. Man, you looked awful. But they need they need something. They need to bounce back from that. My man Tarek Lamptey still doing the business, isn't it? Has I he got, said he's, he's got a knock. Yeah, I, I, I think it was a little bit of a knock. I, I think he'll play. I hope he plays. He looks so good. I go. I'm going to go for a, for a draw here. I'm going to go one one. Okay. And, right. Uh, Greenwood. 
<laughs> just to rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> right, on to... Uh, Palace Everton. On to Palace Everton. Um, I'll tell you, I was going to give this one to you, Richard, but I might, keep bearing in mind the Chelsea goalkeeper chat we've had, I'll, I'll save that one for you. So, I think Palace Everton is a really tricky one because Palace have started so well and so looked so solid that about Everton on the other side of it looked so attacking. Mm. It could it could be quite a close game. This Which is the battle you... of one of my two two of my favourite players in the game. Go on. Hamez and yes. Wilfred Zaha. Mm. Oh. Who I still not got him in yet, but he's coming. He's coming. He's coming, don't worry. That guy. <laughs> he's, he's on fire. He is on fire. He's every on time fire. he every time he has another good week, I'm reminded of <laughs> another call <laughs> I got wrong at the start of the season. Um as he now, he's, I think he's overtaken his total goals for last season already, hasn't he? Uh, probably. He's probably. I think yeah. he only got a couple last season, so he's doing all right. I mean, Everton, Crystal Palace. I would say, obviously, the players I'm going to be looking out for is to continue their form is definitely going to be uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Hamas Rodriguez. As long as they do all right, I'll be happy. But um, I think it's not going to be an easy game for them. I can see that being a possibly even a one-all draw. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be a tight one. game. Yeah. Um, you know... Two teams in good form. Yeah. Right. Uh, Richard, West Brom hosting Chelsea, possibly mm. with uh, some changes in goal. We'll see. But what do you, what do you reckon? Uh, yeah, obviously Chelsea will be clear favourites. I think West Brom, they've brought in uh, Vanovic, haven't they? So yeah. Yeah. It's the legend. Show. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think it with Chelsea, I think that obviously Chelsea need to bounce back themselves. Mm. I think West Brom, tough start to the season, always going to be tough the first three games. And these aren't the games that are going to keep them up. Mm. Um, I think it'll be a better performance from West Brom. Chelsea will edge it 2-1. Do you think Werner will get his, uh, his goal? Uh, possibly. Yeah. You? A lot of talk in the community about Werner at the minute. People okay. are a bit unsure. Um, little stat someone sent me uh, Werner had five take-ons against Liverpool which was more than any other player on the pitch so mm. goes to show he's, he's, he's getting in behind and he's, he's trying to make things happen I just don't think he's got the, support, the right support around him at the minute mm. it's got a, they've never played together this front they've got Havertz and yeah, yeah. all these players that mm. it's, it's going to take a little while to gel I think so yeah. we'll, well see. I need him to score or he's coming out <laughs> let's see Ash Burnley we just touched on them and their yeah. defensive uh, line and they're at home to Southampton. What do you reckon? What are we going to be seeing? Uh, Anyone to look out for? Well, Ings is the one, really, isn't he? Ings is the one. Yeah, he proved the doubt was wrong. But a lot Brilliant of people dropped goal. him after week uh, week one. Did you see the goal against Southampton? Yeah. The over the top and the way he took it down, first touch, out of his feet and just slotted it. Brilliant goal. Uh, yeah, Ings, Ings is definitely the one to watch there. Um, I can see this being a little a one niller Southampton maybe. I just with Burnley's defensive issues at the minute, they've got a few players out. I mean, they're down to the bare bones at the minute. Mm. I mean, it's it's pretty grim. So I can see Saints getting a little one niller here. Ings, Ings on the score sheet. All right. Sheffield, Sheffield yeah, Leeds. Yeah. Listen, Sheffield United haven't started well. We were talking about it. Richard mentioned earlier. I think Leeds. You know, not keeping the clean sheets, but they're just so good going forward. They look like they don't hold back at all they're just if they're going to stay up it's going to be entertaining so I think I can see Leeds actually getting a result here yeah I think I think they might concede but I think uh, yeah maybe a 2-1 to Leeds Sheffield United hopefully Costa doesn't score Sheffield United yeah he will score of course he will the Leeds <laughs> have been free free flowing and free scoring um, yeah. I mean they're, they're not shy are they they're not shy to attack no uh, and Sheffield United just I don't know filthy man Ramsdale mm. Because he, you know, he's conceding a few at the minute, so yeah, tough act might be an opportunity for them to to keep a clean. Yeah, Richard Spurs at home to Newcastle. Yeah, Spurs for me, big win last week. I know Newcastle started the season well, not so good last game. So Spurs for me, I think it will be reasonably comfortable. Goals again, I think three one. That'll be a good uh, a good result for them if they can string a couple. Of... It seems so up and down with Mourinho. You know, every you, one week, one week they look like they're going to, you know, take on the world, and then the next week it all yeah. goes wrong again. So it's mm. so hard to predict with that team. Um, City, City Leicester, your Jesus, yeah, talisman team. This is a meaty game. There's normally goals in this game. Mm. Um, Leicester have got two wins, which I think is their best start since they won the league. Is it? Yeah. So they're they're in good form. There could be goals. There, there should be goals in this game. Vardy's looked a little quiet. 
for me, bar the two penalties in the first game, which is part of the reason why he's come out for Jesus this week. Mm. You know what will happen, right? Vardy's going to pop up. He's going to score. Of course. <laughs> um, I hope so. I can see this being a maybe a, a, a two-one to Man City. Two, yeah, that's two right. one. Yeah, okay. yeah. I fancy a two-one. Uh, hopefully Barnes. I mean, I like watching Barnes play. He's definitely one to watch, and pretty much anyone from Man City going forward is one to watch. Jesus. So hopefully he scores. KDB is just electric. Sterling needs to get off the mark, but I'm sure he will at some point very soon. So yeah, it should be a good game. Cool. West Ham Wolves? Yeah, I think Wolves have got this one down. I mean, they looked, they looked, I know they lost against City, but they looked good. I thought they, you know, pulled themselves together in the second half. Mm. They could have almost got back in the game as well. So I think West Ham has still got their problems. They've got players now ruled out with COVID as well. Yeah. So, mm. that's, so it's still going wrong, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be so still hard. Going wrong. I think without Diop, Diop for me is probably their best defender. So I think uh, Jimenez could, could have a field day, really. Yeah. I think yeah, Moyes has out as well yeah, isn't yeah, it? So, the cup game. I don't know how much does that have much of an effect when the manager's not on the touchline is it um, it can in a bit of a training myth? yeah it can in training in the, when manager's away it's a different environment mm. where it's just the assistant but I think on a game day now everybody the pressure's what it is I yeah mm. fair enough and uh, yeah Fulham hosting Villa Rich, what, do you, what do you reckon um, it's a tough one game to this one yeah I think that Again, I've got a good feeling about Villa this season, and I think that they will edge it. Tough start for Fulham. I, either either a draw or Villa by the single goal. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Fulham have, have been conceding goals, haven't they? So they need to stop that pretty quick. or they're gonna... As long as Mitrovic scores, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't care what else They happens. lose 5-4 and he gets all four, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. And Ash, right, this is probably the game of the week then. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool against Arsenal. Yeah. Liverpool against Arsenal, blockbuster. Again, normally goals in the, in this fixture. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm hoping I'm hoping Aubameyang mm. picks up some uh, picks up some points here. I'm hoping Salah does. On it. the flip side, I've got Trent and Robbo, so it's like, what do you want? So, I mean, ideal scenario is Aubameyang scores and Trent and Robbo chip him with a, an assist or Free two. Free kick each. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to go three one to Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah, That'd and no fun. Salah. Just a quiet game. No. Just go for a one no, no like he did against Mo like he did Salah. against Chelsea. <laughs> Mo Salah, no <laughs> problems. That's what I want to see. No problems for your team. Uh, so, yeah, fingers crossed that'll be the result. But, guys, listen, let me know what do you think on those uh, predictions. If you think we've got them right or wrong, we'd love to hear. So, uh, yeah, drop us a, a comment in the uh, comment box. So we'll see what see who's right. Will it be you or will it be us? But uh be interesting. For Good sure. Good games to watch anyway. For sure. Cool. Questions? Questions? Got to love some questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got some, I've got some bangers for you this week. Come on, then. Um, so this was from Root Cause, at Root Cause on Twitter. Hey, Root, big fan of the show. <laughs> uh, he did drop us a little uh, question last week as well. Uh, what went wrong with Man United? Richard, what went wrong? Um, <laughs> what went wrong? I mean, it was, it was just a very turgid... Uh, turgid performance so, so, is that word so, so, uh, that's a scripture no do you know what it was it was, it, it was just it was poor it was it was a shame because they finished the season I say a shame for United fan anyway they yeah, finished yeah, the yeah. season yeah. so strong last season and yeah just I mean you could blame the fact they haven't had much of a pre-season or what have you but I don't know I don't know it just it, it wasn't like there was a point in the game where you thought okay they're going to really kick on now or or even that okay, three one, but United were a much better team. They weren't like Palace deserved it comfortably. It yeah, was, yeah, it was really. Poor. Yeah, they they looked really good, Palace. I mm. thought yeah, they weren't they weren't shy to, mm. to go and attack, were they? Um, yeah, what do you think went wrong with Manu? It's so hard to say because, like you said, they were doing so well. Uh, you know, post restart last year, they did so so well, and it just, I think everyone, that's why everyone was bringing it. You know, in in the game because they didn't have a week one fixture everyone in Fantasy League was bringing in their players ready for this game. And everyone got burnt, you know, like um, Connor with his triple <laughs> Fernandez. But, uh, you know, I did the same. I thought Greenwood's going to come in. It's, it's, it's against Palace. It's not the hardest game. I know they had a, a good result week one, but I think it's not the hardest game. But, yeah, they just didn't look at it at all. But I'm sure they'll correct it. I, you know, it can't. Maybe it's just a one-off. We we we're quite. It's quite easy to react after one week. Isn't yeah, it? And of course. Just say, oh, they were rubbish. Here's their first game, and then you didn't have Wamba Saka in the side, did he? Started McTominay. Yeah. Um, uh, Fossey Mensah as well. Yeah. Yeah. So 
We'll see. Hopefully they can put it right. Um, second question comes from, from I think this is Connor, the same Connor who won Wally of the Week. Uh, who has a deeper defensive line, West Brom or Ash's hairline? <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave this to you for the analysis. Right. Is the ready? cap staying on? Are you ready? Yeah. Hang on. It's not that bad, is it? Uh, the wing backs aren't kicking the on. The wing backs. <laughs> well, we've got Tarek Lamptey on the right and Luke Shaw on the left. <laughs> oh, dear. That is... I mean, it's, it's an easy question for me. I mean, I've never seen anything. The uh, Mariana Trench is the only thing that can compete with that hairline, mate. So, yeah, it's not I'll, that bad. It's not quite touching my arse yet, but <laughs> get there. Yeah, good question. My favourite question we've ever had. To be and, uh, yeah, I think we know the answer. We don't need to analyse that too much. Self-explanatory. That was rhetorical, Connor. Thank you. Um, and uh, last question comes from um, the first sub FPL podcast. Um, handle is the first sub underscore FPL. Thanks for your question, guys. Is uh, Sterling really an alternative to KDB, or is Kev on pens the decider? For me, mm. and I'll come to you in a sec, Richard, but for me, I think De Bruyne is the best fantasy league asset in the game. Even because at 11.5? Yeah. Better because than Salah? At this point, potentially yes. Because I think if you're on penalties, which I know Salah is predominantly because Milner's not really uh, getting much game time, but I think the way that VARs come into the game, the amount of penalties that that City, you know, Sterling, they've got so many quick players and tricky players on those, they're, they're going to be winning penalties, um, you know, with, with VAR and everything like that. And even like some of the handball ones are just mental to see now that are getting given. Oh, that's crazy, that Lindelof one. That is going to work. It's still going to work in his favour. So yeah. I think he's the best player. And it's just, he's involved in everything. And I understand Sterling will pop up every now and again. He's going to get a hat-trick or he could score braces and, and a hat trick mm. but then he goes a little bit quiet for a few games and I think that's just the sort of player he is but Kevin De Bruyne every single week seems to be the, 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 the centre of it all I don't know Rich, Rich what do you think um, obviously a bit of a novice when it comes to the, the fantasy but no look in terms <laughs> of players yeah for me Kevin De Bruyne all day. Don't, don't get me wrong by the way Sterling's a joke like, he's oh, it's unbelievable fantastic, but, but I just yeah, think yeah. that Kevin De Bruyne is for me, the outstanding player in the Premier League at the moment. Mm. And I think then you've got a few players who are that, that next level down, which is still world-class, and certainly yeah. Sterling's in that. But yeah, Kevin De Bruyne, incredible. I mean, not even just on pens. He's on corners. He's on yeah, free yeah. kicks. I mean, yeah. he's, he's on absolutely everything. The whole the whole show runs around yeah. him. Mm. And now he's captain. He's, he seems to have really mm. come mm. on. He takes responsibility for that whole team and drives them on now. Uh, certainly with David Silva, obviously, leaving the club in the summer, I think maybe more responsibility kind of going forward and, 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 and really sort of cementing himself as a legend of that club. I think yeah. he's an unbelievable player. Yeah. Which I know as a Man United fan, he's probably <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit tough. But, uh, but yeah, listen, I think, he's, I think he's the best in the game. So is that three you're agreeing as well? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely I better. I think first up, that's, than that's three out of three. So it's fairly unanimous with that one. Thanks, uh, first up. So, uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, that's pretty much almost it, guys. Um, before we go, we would like to just announce that we are launching a uh, new FPL Juice sticker challenge. Have we got the stickers? Uh, we'll flash them up on the screen. Yeah, we've got, we'll, we've got an image. We've got. We we'll get so. an image. We've got an image somewhere, right? Yeah, we've got an image somewhere. Um, so yeah, drop us a comment or DM us, and what we like to do is send you out. We'll mail you out a sticker, uh, and what we'd like to do is is to put it in the weirdest, craziest, just most obscure place that you can stick it. Uh, take a picture and then send it in to us and we will decide the winner and the winner will get a, uh, a very special prize. What are we thinking? The, uh, the shirt. We've got a beautiful shirt. Yeah. So if you have a little look, pan to Nick, there's a beautiful orange FPL juice uh, football shirt. So we'll be giving this away to the winner of the competition. So guys, do, uh, do drop us a, a comment. Let us know what size you are. If you're extra yeah. medium like me, It'll, Extra uh, medium. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when Blackburn won the league. Um, yeah, do drop us a, a comment and DM us. Uh, get involved, and we we would love to see where you can where you can find uh, where you can place these stickers legally. Uh, yeah, legally. Full disclo disclosure. <laughs> Don't want to see him 
covering uh, any police cars in them or anything. No, like no that. nipples or anything like that, please. Well, no, it's a, it's a family show. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that'd be great. Um, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. So that'd be that'd be awesome to see those coming in. Um, just want to say thank you again, Richard. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've had a load of fun. It's been great having you. So great uh, being here. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll we'll get you back on at some point as well. Maybe sounds good. See uh, at the end of the season. See. Once um, I've got Martinez in my team mm. and it's all been saved <laughs> and that two-point penalty save at the end of the season wins the league for me, uh, that'll come in handy. So, yeah, awesome. We've enjoyed having you. Um, we'll be back next week again. We've got another special guest next week uh, in the form of Adrian Mariapa, former, former uh, teammate of yours. Uh, Watford, Reading, Crystal Palace as well. So a lot of... Uh, What's going on with all these Watford, Watford players? We need some Luton. <laughs> we need some Luton in here. <laughs> we will definitely definitely get a Luton player on as well just to, just to level it up a bit but uh, at the moment we'll start with the cream of the crop and then uh, we'll work our way down <laughs> uh, Rich you're, you've got a podcast as well right mm. do, do you, let yeah. us know what it is because it'd be great I'm sure a lot of the, 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 the viewers will want to be tuning into that and, and checking out everything yeah. as well yeah so, so uh, Goalkeepers Union if you look at uh, wherever you get your podcasts on uh, it will be on there and we've had interviews with Joe Hart Begovic Tom Heaton, um, yeah, Ben Foster, yeah, a lot of the Premier League lads, a few of the coaches as well. Got about ninety odd podcasts on there now. So awesome. yeah, check it out. That's Excellent. brilliant. If you'd like to uh, to follow uh, Richard, he's uh, on Twitter at Dicky Lee, and he's also on the gram uh, Richard Lee GK. So make sure you guys uh, check it out. Give him a follow, give him a like, um, and uh, yeah, follow his stuff. Perfect. Beautiful. Guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to share this, like it, subscribe, get it all going on. We're on Twitter, as you know. Um, but yeah, drop us. We're now on iTunes. Got episodes one and two are now on there. So drop us a little uh, five-star review. Do you know what would be good? If you can drop in a little footballer's punned uh, review, that would be brilliant to see. We'd like to see some yeah. some names you can work into the review. Most Love creative puns. most creative one will get a shout-out next week. Let's see what we can do. Brilliant. Cool. All good. Guys, we'll see you in a week. Thanks for watching. Bye.